maritime disasters, the one ship that everyone has heard of is the Titanic. The pride of her company, the White Star Line, and the biggest ship in the world. Her tragic loss on her maiden voyage in 1912 shook the world. That a ship some had claimed unsinkable could be so cruelly destroyed and with such tremendous loss of life. It was designed and built as the safest and most luxurious liner on the lucrative North Atlantic passenger route. The Cunard liners, Lusitania and Mauritania, had been built for speed, but the White Star's new giant liners, Olympic and Titanic, were the last word in elegance, comfort and safety, and the pinnacle of Edwardian marine technology. New theories are still being debated, whether inferior steel was used in her construction, whether a fire in her coal store urged the captain to maintain a dangerously high speed in an ice field with definite warnings of icebergs. But even at the time, the facts of what really happened were not immediately clear. What is clear is that the great ship built by Harland and Wolfe in Belfast, along with her sister ship, Olympic, set sail from Southampton on April the 10th, 1914. She called at Cherbourg and Queenstown in Southern Ireland before setting off towards New York. At 20 minutes to midnight on April the 14th, she struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic. Just over two and a half hours later, she had gone down. Only 705 people survived from the 2,228 on board. The liner carried more than the regulation number of lifeboats, but there were only enough places for about half those on board ship, and she wasn't even full. And with many lifeboats only partially filled, even less people could be saved. At dawn, these survivors were rescued by the liner Carpathia, the first ship on the scene. On both sides of the Atlantic, confusion reigned, particularly in the press. What were the facts? Many newspaper editors had to speculate on what had and what was happening. The Carpathia steamed on towards New York, which looked very different from how it looks today. Captain Rostron only allowed personal messages to be broadcast from the ship, so it wasn't until the Carpathia docked in New York that the press and the world knew the true story of the sinking of the Titanic. The profusion of information in the American press looked at the disaster from all sides and some of the sidelights featured in the minor headlines carry their own human interest. There was great use of illustrations. Pictures and artwork were suitably evocative and dramatic. various graphic ways of comparing sizes of the ship to buildings and the iceberg. The British press also responded quickly. The newspapers of the time had a field day. The first newspapers in America just tended, tended to report that the ship was safe. Then as later reports came in, they reported the disaster and its magnitude. The English newspapers didn't. They just said that the ship had been saved and that she was under tow and everybody was, uh, had survived. This one actually says, disaster to the Titanic, world's largest ship collides with an iceberg in the Atlantic. But underneath it does say that everybody was saved and that the ship is being towed. In the later editions it had the full disaster.
On Saturday, April the 20th, which was the first Saturday after the disaster, the newspapers, or a lot of them, produced their own special editions. This shows one cover of the Daily Mirror for Saturday, April the 20th. And this is the same newspaper with a different cover. One was the first edition and the other was the second edition. The Daily Graphic, which was a daily newspaper, well, in fact, there were two of them. One was an illustrated one, which came out on the Saturday only. And this one was the normal daily newspaper. This is a special uh, complete magazine, or complete newspaper, rather, that was a commemorative one, whereas the graphic magazine, which is this one, is, it has a few articles on Titanic but the rest of it is the normal magazine. This was very much like the Illustrated London News. On April the 27th, which was the following Saturday, they did it yet again. Not so much with the newspapers, but with the magazines. They were bringing out all kinds of more detailed items that they thought that the public would be interested in, which, of course, they were. Well, we found that when we were doing research for the book, all kinds of little human interest stories, and the, the favourite one is that the passengers got off the ship with five dogs. Believe it or not, they managed to save five dogs. I couldn't believe it when I read it. My daughter had asked me some years ago about this, and I said, no, there weren't any, survive, any dogs that survived. And there it was, out of 300,000 words, one paragraph. It wasn't only the graphic that did special editions. This one is of the sphere for the 20th, but also the Illustrated London News, Lloyd's Weekly News, they brought out a, a superb magazine uh, completely devoted to the Titanic. Very, very good indeed. They, I think they ended up going to three editions within just a few weeks. Very popular. Then there was a profusion of memorial artefacts, postcards, artwork, sheet music. The style was melodramatic and sentimental, but sincere and of its time. Gradually.